the new California Republic as it is when we find it during the events of Fallout New Vegas would be bad for the Mojave. That's not to say that they're not the best option. We have to remember that every faction in the Mojave has its pros and cons, even the Legion. They have a lot of cons, but they do keep the road safe. If I was making my decision just based on the quality of roads, well, I'd probably choose the Legion. But it's not just about roads. There's a lot going on here. This video is not about choosing the best faction for the Mojave. That video is gonna come later after I finish completing the game by siding with Yes Man, getting an independent New Vegas. Right now, I just wanna talk about the NCR's flaws. It's not a perfect faction. This isn't an easy decision to make. The NCR suffers from overextension and is rife with corruption. Now, many players have a soft spot for the NCR because, in a way, we're responsible for it. During the events of Fallout 1, we can save the town of Shady Sands, and if we do, Aradash and his daughter Tandy found the New California Republic. Tandy even becomes one of the Republic's presidents and is re-elected time and time again until her death. Even by the events of Fallout New Vegas, she is still a beloved memory by the citizens of the NCR. So it's natural for the player to kind of have a connection to the NCR because we've watched it grow from the very beginning. But the NCR of 2281 is very different. It's changed over the years. One of the major criticisms that is levied against the NCR early in the game is by Caesar himself. As a young man, I was taught to venerate President Tandy of Shady Sands, the founding mother of the new California Republic. Did you know her presidency lasted 52 years? And that her father, Aradesh, was the Republic's first president? Does that sound like a democracy to you? Or a hereditary dictatorship? But President Tandy was voted into office each time. Because the council didn't dare oppose her. She was too popular. She had the people's love. So things ran smoothly, more or less. And as soon as she was gone, as soon as there really could be democracy, what happened then? Ever since losing its queen, the NCR has been weaker, more diffuse. Democracy has been its weakness, not its strength. Caesar excuses his authoritarian regime by pointing to President Tandy. She did effectively serve as president for her entire life. And in his mind, that makes her no better than an emperor. Tandy was elected for each term. The NCR simply didn't have term limits. I'm sure Caesar would say, well, the voters were brainwashed into supporting Tandy time and time again. That doesn't mean she was a good leader. That doesn't mean she deserved to be president. They just had an effective marketing campaign. They were great at propaganda. It doesn't mean the people of the NCR were truly free or that republics work. Sure, that's a possible explanation, but another explanation is that she was simply the best choice and that she was a good leader and that the people of the NCR knew that she was a good leader and that's why she was re-elected time and time again. This, I believe, is proven after her death because after her death, the people of the NCR had to elect someone else and every president they elected after Tandy made decisions that led to the NCR becoming fragile by the events of Fallout New Vegas. Tandy's successor, Joanna Tibbet, heard reports from scouts of the glimmering lights of Vegas and the power of Hoover Dam. Rumors of the riches of Vegas drew the attention of NCR prospectors, citizens of the NCR who lived in California who traveled to Nevada in order to gain riches. But without the NCR's military presence to protect them, the NCR citizens were easy pickings for raiders. Because of this, Joanna Tibbet lasted as president for only five years after 38 NCR citizens were murdered by raiders in the Mojave Wasteland. She was elected out of office because her response to the murder of those 38 citizens was too timid. And so her successor, Wendell Peterson, made sure that he didn't make this same mistake. Instead, he chose to extend the borders of the NCR in all directions. And it was under Wendell Peterson that the NCR became more imperialistic. Annexation became the modus operandi of the NCR. It became about increasing the NCR's borders, no matter the cost. 
Neighboring towns and villages woke up one day to find themselves annexed. They're now part of the NCR. They didn't really have a choice, but hey, now they can vote. Oh yeah, but you gotta pay taxes too. Some may say that these towns and cities benefited from this. And there's no argument that as new citizens of the NCR, they get all of the benefits that come with it. The ability to vote, to choose their own leaders, and of course, the protection of the NCR military. There are two problems with this rapid expansion. The first is I don't like the idea of it being forced. The people of the Wasteland should have the freedom to choose to join the NCR or to establish their own societies. But they don't have that choice because the NCR has grown so large and powerful that no one can stand against it. No little town in the shadow of the NCR can say, we refuse to join because they will just get enveloped. Now, some may say, Oxhorn, you're exhibiting pre-war values. This is a post-apocalypse. Those values don't belong, but they do. Because the number one complaint the people who are annexed by the NCR have is that they don't have a choice in the matter. In this post-apocalypse, if you go to Freeside, if you go to New Vegas, if you go to North Vegas, you find people who resent the NCR because the NCR is robbing them of their independence. Mention the NCR and people around here get a little on edge. There's talk that they're going to take over all of New Vegas. It doesn't help that they've got military camps all over the place, and more troops pour into the area daily. People in Freeside generally fall into one of two categories. Those who've been here all their lives call themselves locals. When people from the NCR and other places started pouring in, the locals began referring to them as squatters, and the name stuck. The locals blame the squatters for the scarcity of resources in Freeside, and the squatters blame any act of violence against them on the locals. They're both right to some extent, and violent outbreaks between the two are all too common these days. That is a mentality of a person who was born and grew up in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. These are not pre-war values, these are human values. The atomic bombs that dropped in 2077 didn't wave a magic wand and change the fundamental characteristics of humanity. People don't like being forced to do things. Under Wendell Peterson, the NCR became imperialistic, but worse, it grew too quickly. The borders of the NCR grew so large that despite their numbers and despite their riches, they found themselves unable to adequately defend the people living within the bounds of their nation. And if you can't provide that, then what's the benefit of being annexed? You're living in some town, the NCR comes by and annexes you, promising you greater prosperity and safety, but you gotta spend some taxes, so you spend your taxes. They take your money, but then the NCR says, sorry, you're on the fringes of our nation. We just can't send troops to protect you. You need to fend for yourselves. And suddenly it becomes a huge scam. The NCR gets your money, but you don't get the protection you need to survive. One of the places Wendell Peterson was trying to extend the influence of the NCR was the Mojave Wasteland. And one of his champions, the man who made this possible, was Aaron Kimball, a general of the NCR army who led NCR forces into the Mojave Wasteland to defend the NCR prospectors who came there to find their fortune. During those years, he was so successful as a general that he began to become politically ambitious, and Wendell Peters' champion became his own undoing. Aaron Kimball ran for the presidency and was elected in 2273. He then chose to make the Mojave Wasteland the focus of his presidency. It was under Aaron Kimball that the NCR finally arrived at Hoover Dam, met Robert House and his Securitron army, met the three families, and signed the Treaty of New Vegas. It was under Aaron Kimball that the NCR military moved in force into the Mojave Wasteland, establishing their headquarters at Camp McCarran in 2275. And it was under Aaron Kimball that the NCR won the first Battle of Hoover Dam in 2277. But despite that victory, in the years that followed, President Kimball's popularity waned. And the reason his popularity waned with the voters back at home is because this war, his war in the Mojave Wasteland, was costing the lives of their children. The bloom of youth of an entire generation of California was sent to the deserts of Nevada where they died. 
And so the people ask themselves, why are we sending our children there to die? What are we getting from this? Aaron Kimball promises them power from Hoover Dam, the riches of New Vegas, and an entire wasteland to colonize. But the reality is that when NCR prospectors go to the Mojave wasteland, they're slaughtered by fiends, by monsters, while traveling roads that are wild because the NCR doesn't have the resources to protect them. Even when the NCR does great things and builds a pipeline to Lake Mead to bring fresh drinking water to the Mojave, they don't have the resources or the ability to make sure that that water isn't stolen, that it's available to the sharecroppers. The sharecroppers who are growing all the food that the army needs to survive. If the courier doesn't find the thieves who are stealing water from the pipeline, the NCR sharecroppers pack up and leave. You showed up just in time to say goodbye. Me and a couple of the others are packing it in and heading back to California. The water ration's still a problem, and the NCR doesn't look like it's going to do anything about it anytime soon. Ah, well, why can't you just grow fewer crops? I wouldn't be able to meet the quota, and the NCR would kick me out of my job anyway. Nah, it's better I get out on my own terms. Without them, who's going to farm the food? Without the food, how do they feed the troops? If they can't feed the troops, how can they maintain their presence in the Mojave? Without the courier's intervention, this happens. They lose their food. Under President Tandy, the NCR grew slowly. But after President Tandy, the NCR became a victim of its own success. It had grown to be so big and so powerful that too many people had their hands in the cookie jar. Aaron Kimball saw the NCR military as a tool he could use to gain personal glory. But many of the other people working both in the government and the military simply saw the NCR as a piggy bank something they could dip their hands into to profit, or a place where they could go to get a nice cushy desk job. I can sit at my desk each and every day, and if something goes wrong, well, it's someone else's fault. The NCR government had become a bureaucracy. The bureaucracy is so huge and sluggish that even when we find evidence that the Crimson Caravan colluded with the Van Graffs to sack and murder competing caravans when doing heartache by the number for Rose of Sharon Cassidy, if we choose the peaceful solution, we learn that it's going to take a couple of years for the evidence to process through the NCR before the Crimson Caravan can be held to account. People turning against each other when the Mojave's at risk of falling? If the Republic's sinkhole progress doesn't kill us, greed will. Get on now. I'll make sure this gets west and let the wheels of law start turning in the courts. Not even God himself could move the Congress in or out of session. And this... this is a tricky matter. That was some tricky political maneuvering, but worth it. Even if it takes a few years. The bureaucracy is too big and slow, and with the big and slow bureaucracy comes lack of communication. And when you have lack of communication between camps in the Mojave Wasteland, you have roads, unprotected military camps, unfortified. The courier's entire story in the Mojave Wasteland while working with the NCR is to clean up their own mess, to fix the things that the NCR's sluggish bureaucracy simply can't tackle. Dealing with the communication problem at Camp Golf, so that the NCR can finally send resources to battle-weary Camp Forlorn Hope, which is currently under siege by Legion forces. That is their front line in the Mojave Wasteland, but the NCR can't be bothered to send troops there because they've got some sort of communication problem. Yeah, they're setting up refugee camps at Bitter Springs to help people, but what's the point if they don't have the supplies they need to actually heal the sick? The NCR is so short on manpower, and communication within the military is so poor, that when Ranger Esteban is murdered by fiends, his body lies baking on 200-year-old asphalt in the Mojave Desert Sun. His wife, Private Morales, had one request, that the NCR simply retrieve her husband's body so that she can provide it a proper burial. My husband, he's a ranger, and he... He got murdered by a pack of fiends. Goddamn savages laid his body out to rot. Brass won't say it to me straight, but they mean to leave Esteban out there. I can see that plain. Colonel says he can't spare the men to bring Esteban back home. And the fiends, they put all kinds of mines and traps around his body. Snipers, too. Well, if your husband is dead, what does it matter if you get the corpse back? You never lost anybody, have you? Not like this. Never had to think about that person you love all alone out there, cooking in the sun like meat. 
NCR never leaves a soldier behind. <laughs> That's what the recruiters told us, promised us. We believed them. But the area is covered with fiends, and the NCR just simply doesn't have the resources to spend to retrieve a dead soldier. And so who has to fix this problem? The courier. The NCR doesn't have the resources to bury one body. This fatal flaw of overextension led to the greatest mistake that the NCR made. After the first Battle of Hoover Dam, the Legion retreated, but they didn't have to retreat very far. They retreated to the other side of the Colorado, and the NCR didn't follow them to stamp them out. Why is that? Because they didn't have the resources. Now, part of this can be explained away by the fact that their ability to move troops effectively was put into disarray after the events of the Divide. This is something we learned from Joshua Graham. I can say that we were both lucky that NCR supply lines and land routes north of Mojave Outpost were destroyed before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Something bad happened near Death Valley at a place called the Divide. NCR couldn't cut across anymore, and it slowed down the reinforcements. Terrible storms ripped entire companies apart before they even got to Nevada soil. The aftermath of Hoover Dam could have been even worse for Caesar. What's the Divide? I don't know for certain, and I don't think NCR knows either. Whatever happened at the Divide was too much for them to handle. The events of the Divide were effectively an act of God. They were unpredictable. There's no way the NCR could have planned for it. But because they had overextended themselves, because they were so far away from California, the Divide devastated their ability to mount an effective offense to stamp out the Legion then and there. One could argue that had they been set up better in the Mojave, they wouldn't have been so crippled by the events at the Divide. Perhaps despite those events, they would have been able to form a vertebrate fleet that they could have sent to stamp out the Legion. We don't know what they would have done had the Divide not happened, it's all speculation, but I bet that had they moved into the Mojave more slowly, grown the borders of their nation organically, instead of growing exponentially, consuming everything in their path, they would have been in a better position to respond to the events of the Divide and stamp out the Legion. Now, there are many criticisms of the NCR that I don't think are necessarily fair. Yes, of course, there are petty rivalries that happen in the NCR. For example, General Oliver was jealous of all of the attention that Chief Hanlon got after his victory at the First Battle of Hoover Dam, and so what does he do? He effectively demotes Chief Hanlon, puts himself in charge of preparations for the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, but he is not a good tactician, not compared to Chief Hanlon. And so due to petty jealousy and rivalries, the NCR is making a potentially disastrous decision. That's a legitimate criticism but it's a criticism that every faction can have. The Legion is filled with humans just like the NCR is filled with humans. The Legion, too, has its own petty rivalries between soldiers. Indeed, we pick up a whiff of that conflict when siding with the Legion. Legatlanius despises Volpe's Inculta because he doesn't think that trickery is very honorable, whereas Volpe's Inculta doesn't think much of Legatlanius. If Caesar dies, we find Volpe's Inculta practically shivering in fear. He knows his services will no longer be needed by Legatlanius, because Legatlanius is not a crafty man. All he understands is might and force. He's not a man of strategy. The strength of Caesar keeps this rivalry from harming the Legion that much, since all decisions go through Caesar, and Caesar is a much wiser man than Legatlanius. But as we explored in my video on the Legion, that strength is also the Legion's weakness, because once Caesar dies, Lanius becomes the new Caesar, and there will be no one left to temper his brutality. Even when General Oliver makes the disastrous decision to take Hanlon off the job and to place himself in that role instead, at least he is tempered by more level-headed individuals. Colonel Shu, for example, who has direct access to General Oliver. I believe it's unrealistic to pretend that the Legion is somehow immune to that aspect of human nature. The only faction that would be immune to that aspect of human nature would be a faction without humans. A faction including Yes Man. That's a conversation for another day. There is so much good we can say about the NCR. They don't discriminate based on gender, allowing the NCR to benefit from both halves of the human population, increasing their strength. 
They, at least on paper, support the notions of individual freedom and liberty, which gives people a reason to want to work with them, and this is something that we see time and time again. Even many of the critics we find of the NCR, like Rose of Sharon Cassidy, who's not afraid to talk about all of the ways the NCR fails her, and Ambassador Crocker and Boone and many of the soldiers of the NCR military, still believe in the NCR and support the NCR compared to alternatives because of what the NCR stands for. Not necessarily because of what the NCR does, but because of the NCR's ideals. A person is important. A great number of people freely working together makes a more powerful nation. Those ideals may make the NCR one of the best choices, a topic I'll cover in another video, but I am forced to conclude that when we find the NCR in the Mojave Wasteland in 2281 during the events of Fallout New Vegas, at that moment of time and before any courier intervention, the NCR is not a good choice for the long-term health of the people of the Mojave Wasteland. Even though I disagree with the imperialistic nature of the NCR trying to annex the little towns and societies of New Vegas, one could argue that had they the ability to defend the places that they annexed, it may be better for the people who live there. But they don't. They are still necessary. They're the only ones keeping the Legion and the Fiends at bay. House certainly couldn't do it without the intervention of the Courier. So one could argue that the Mojave Wasteland wouldn't necessarily be better if the NCR were gone, but their presence is not effective and oftentimes not welcome. But all of that said, that doesn't mean that they're not the best choice, especially if we consider the intervention of the Courier and if we consider the effect that hope has on the human psyche. The effect of hope is notoriously hard to measure, but soldiers who carry with them the hope of a unified Mojave free from the oppression of raiders and tyrants, and hope that the citizens of the NCR will elect the right people, and their leaders will finally weed out corruption, keep their promises, and diminish unnecessary bureaucracy, can still do great things. But those are my thoughts about the NCR and the Mojave Wasteland. I'd love to read what you think. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm producing this video after having completed the game by siding with the NCR, which I published in my series on the full story of Fallout New Vegas. You can watch that playlist by clicking here. We've completed the game by siding with House, siding with Caesar, and now siding with the NCR. That leaves one faction left to do siding with Yes Man to create an independent New Vegas. Would an independent New Vegas be the best option for the entire Mojave Wasteland? To find out, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I publish many videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the independent storyline when I publish it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop. The Burned Man Walks. It's everyone's favorite blue-eyed, burned, and bandaged, pistol-whipping ex-Legion Mormon. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can also get this design on a bunch of other products as well, like smartphone cases, including Samsung cases. I made sure to include that for this design. Pillows, posters, mugs, prints, a whole bunch of stuff. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon this very week with more brand new videos.